A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the commandments in his hands. Tablets that were written on both sides, front and back. Tablets that were made by God. Having inscriptions on them that were engraved by God himself. Now when Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, That sounds like a battle in camp. But Moses answered, It does not sound like cries of victory, nor does it sound like cries of defeat. What I hear are the cries of revelry. As he drew near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. With that, Moses' wrath flared up, so that he threw the tablets down and broke them on the base of the mountain. Taking the calf they had made, he fused it in the fire and then ground it down to powder, which he scattered on the water and made the children of Israel drink. Moses asked Aaron, What did this people ever do to you that you should lead them into so grave a sin? Aaron replied, Let not my Lord be angry. You know well enough how prone the people are to evil. They said to me, Make us a god to be our leader. As for the man Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. So I told them, let anyone who has gold jewelry take it off. They gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and this calf came out. On the next day, Moses said to the people, you have committed a grave sin. I will go up to the Lord then. Perhaps I may be able to make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Ah, this people has indeed committed a grave sin in making a god of gold for themselves. If only you would forgive their sin. If you will not, then strike me out of the book that you have written. The Lord answered, Him only who has sinned against me will I strike out of my book. Now go and lead the people to the place I have told you. My angel will go before you. When it is time for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good the Lord, for he is good. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Father willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when fully grown, it is the largest of plants. 
it becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a lot of mustard seeds up here. I'm going to grab a handful and if I were to take this handful of virtual mustard seeds and throw them out, how many would be going into the air? Any thoughts? How many would be going into the air? A lot. That's right. Yes. One time we had this parable of Jesus, and I mentioned the question, how many mustard seeds could you put in your hand? By the next week, one of our parishioners came back and said to me, I went to the store, I bought mustard seed, and I counted out a handful of mustard seed. 3,458 for that size hand. And I thought, of those mustard seeds, how many mustard trees could be born? Wow. Imagine that, just from a handful. This is what Jesus was teaching. And all of you who are gardeners and bakers can certainly relate to the gospel today. Because Jesus used these parables. Talked about yeast. You know about yeast, good yeast, bad yeast, how long it takes for things to rise and shine, actually. Okay. And gardeners, you know, everything that's going on, now's the kind of like the harvest time. You know, the sunflowers are now growing, the mustard seeds are growing, the asparagus is growing, and everything else is too. The harvest is near. So Jesus uses these to teach. And in today's readings, we have some important lessons. Like for instance, here's Moses who has led the people out of slavery through God's power. He goes up the mountain, And when he comes back, it's a disaster. Here the people were following the Lord in in many different ways, turning away. He goes to, to receive the commandments. And when he comes back down the mountain, they've already turned to other gods. You know, he probably said to them, I can't be away from you for like one day and you turn away from God? What's going on? Aren't you supposed to be more faithful than that? So the message was that God would continue to give, the Egypt, uh, to give the Israelites opportunity after opportunity, forgive them, take them back, because he made the covenant that he would always be with them, and he kept his covenant. They didn't always, but God certainly did. So the message continues. You know, we're following the Israelites in our first reading through their journey. Journeys have been good. Look how many good things have happened to them, and now they turn away. Yet the message is they will come back. Also uh, today, unrelated to these two readings, of course, is the memorial for Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of Mary and grandparents of Jesus. So today we celebrate the feast for all grandparents. So to all of you who are grandparents, a happy feast day and to pray for your grandchildren. That's a wonderful thing. For them to realize the goodness of your wisdom. That's another thing that's so important. And we know that Saint uh, uh, Joachim is the uh, patron of fathers and grandparents, grandfathers. Uh, Saint Anne is the patroness of uh, women in labor, grandmothers, and minors, M-I-N-E-R-S not ORS, because I thought, isn't that interesting? How would St. Anne have any relationship to do with minors? And of course, the explanation is because precious metals are mined and natural resources are mined, they are precious as Jesus is the most precious 
in our faith. So that's the connection. So to all of you who fit into those categories, a happy feast day. So the message, of course, today is be faithful to the Lord, know of his goodness, and continue to share it. And you know that because you're here. And how wonderful it is that you are here to celebrate the goodness of these two saints, by the way, who are never mentioned in Scripture. If you try to find them in Scripture, they're not there. And in fact, uh, one commentary said, or a couple of them said, we don't even know if that's their real names. All we know them is, we know Mary had parents, whatever their names might be. We're going with Joachim and Anne, and it'll be okay. So celebrate the goodness of today. Take the message of the Lord to others. Pray for those who are really in special need and help someone today if you have a chance. And all grandparents today, you may take the day off. God bless you.